On today's episode, we will cover our second player for our 22-23 season evaluations. And today's episode is all about Tyler Sagan. We'll talk about the perseverance that he played with all season long, the inconsistency with line mates, and what the expectation is for Sagan going into next season. All of this and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Tuesday, June 6th. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. or how you choose to listen. Uh, and you can also find and follow us on social media. Just search for Locked on Stars on Instagram and Twitter. I hope you guys are enjoying the early stages of our player evaluation series. We've, of course, covered Jason Robertson. And I wanted to talk about a different forward today in Tyler Sagan, one of the most polarizing players, it seems at times, on the Stars roster, a guy who is beloved by the fan base here in Dallas and has been for quite some time, but also tends to draw a fair amount of criticism uh, in his direction as well. And we're going to cover the entire range uh, of everything that has to do with number 91 here on today's episode. And, and it's an interesting time to be looking at Tyler Sagan's career as he's now on the upper side of the age of 30. He's 31 years old. And of course, coming into this season, as has been the case for the past several seasons, it seems, or really past couple seasons, there's been people who have questioned uh, what the outlook and output production would look like for Tyler Sagan coming into the year. Still somewhat recovering from injuries and playing with new teammates. There was a lot of uncertainty uh, surrounding what the year would look like for Sagan. And of course, he and Jamie Benn catching plenty of criticism from team owner Tom Gillardi, as well as many other uh, fans and maybe members of the media as well, just given the size of the contracts of both of those players, but especially uh, Tyler Sagan, who is one of the most, or one of, if not the highest paid player in the league in terms of just salary on a season by season basis, making just under $10 million uh, a year until 2027. And so a guy who will be with this team for quite some time as he continues to age. But I think that there's still plenty to like, uh, with Tyler Sagan wearing a victory green sweater. And I just think the unfortunate part of it is that the expectation for these 80, 90 point seasons for him are probably not too realistic to expect going forward. I, I believe what the career high is 84 for Tyler Sagan uh, now at age 31. I'm not saying that he can't come out and, you know, match that or go a little bit higher. Uh, we've seen Jamie Benn have his successful bounce back season. We've seen Joe Pavelski produce at some incredibly high levels in his old age. But I think that both of those players, Ben and Pavelski do do things differently than what Tyler Sagan does. And Sagan was just a different player when he was truly in his prime. But I think the most impressive thing about Tyler Sagan this year was the perseverance and the ability to be present for the team when he was needed again, not really ever sure if we're going to see these 80 plus point seasons from Sagan ever again, but he can still contribute. And what I'm going to remember the most from Sagan this past season was the times that he stepped up when the team was shorthanded and absolutely needed him to not just fill a spot on the roster, but to fill in and produce Rope Hintz goes down with an injury in mid January and Tyler Sagan was able to step into that role seamlessly uh, and fill in on that center position playing alongside Jason Robertson and Joe Pavelski and did an excellent job. Uh, really, the Stars offense didn't miss much of a beat with Sagan in at the position. He could win faceoffs like Rope Hintz could do. He could shoot the puck. He could distribute. And, and even though he's not as fast as Rope, although he might have been able to be as fast in his younger days, he was able to hang just fine 
with the Stars' top line, and they were still able to find success, even with Rope Hintz injured and Sagan having to step up. And of course, this happened in the postseason as well on the top line when we saw Joe Pavelski get injured in Game 1 against the Minnesota Wild. Sagan went on to have six points in six games in that series against Minnesota, including four goals and two assists. Just phenomenal, phenomenal performances from Tyler Sagan in round one of the postseason, stepping up when the team needed someone to step up because obviously we saw that Pavelski was going to produce. Uh, he would scored a goal before the injury, and then, of course, once he came back from the injury, just lit the league on fire in that series against Seattle. But Sagan was able to come in and produce just fine himself and then also alongside uh, you know Rope Hint who was the best skater on the team for the Stars in that series against Minnesota and so what's going to be interesting for Tyler Sagan going forward is that he's going to have to restructure his game and I feel like we've already started to see that to some extent as he's starting to get into his early 30s uh, you know he's losing his speed he's not as mobile as he once was but I think all things considered, 21 goals, 50 points from him. Not terrible through 76 games this season, given the circumstances. And again, I already know that there's going to be people to say that 50, 50 points is terrible for, for a guy making as much money as Tyler Sagan is making. But again, you, you factor in the circumstances, and I think that you can be pretty pleased and also still optimistic uh, that there can be a turnaround and maybe some more production for him going forward. And I think a lot of people are on the same page as me uh, given you know his out, output this season, again, with the polls on Twitter, I asked you guys uh, your thoughts on Tyler Sagan's season by giving a letter grade, uh, and the resounding answer uh, was a B at 68%, uh, 9% A, 21% C, and then 2% F. So uh, I think at the time of recording this, there's maybe around 300 or maybe 350 votes. So not as big of a sample size as the Jason Robertson poll, but... Uh, to my credit, I guess, or discredit, I didn't give as much time for this poll to breathe as I did the Jason Robertson one, but I'm sure more votes will continue to roll in. And I imagine more people will migrate towards the B grade for Tyler Sagan, which I think is totally fair, where he produced, he stepped up when the team absolutely needed him, but you would still also like to see him take that next step and maybe contribute a little bit more and truly earn that contract that he has until 2027 I just don't know, again, if we're going to see another 80 or 85-point season for Tyler Sagan, although I, I won't completely give up, given, again, what we saw from Jamie Benn this past season. And we know that this game is not as demanding physically, just in terms of guys being worn down. You're starting to see guys play with excellence as they continue to age. So maybe as Tyler Sagan continues to restructure his game and evolve his game, we'll finally see him you know, get back into a scoring rhythm and see him produce maybe like we did a few seasons ago. But I think there's some other factors that go into Sagan's production or sometimes lack of production, especially this past season. And we're going to dive into that and explain why Sagan might have struggled at times this season coming up next. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can make sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I want to thank you again for making Locked on Stars your first listen every single day. For all the everydayers out there continuing to make Locked on Stars a part of their daily lives, thank you again for tuning in to our off-season content uh, getting things started off with these player evaluations, continuing to talk about Tyler Sagan and the year he had 2022, 2023. And there was a lot of perseverance, a lot of gutsy performances from Tyler Sagan, continuing to battle through injuries and recoveries and making the most of it. 
Uh, but there was a few knocks that you could have against Tyler Sagan this past season. And I would argue the biggest one wasn't really necessarily his fault. And it's that he had trouble finding consistent line mates throughout the entirety of the season, or really rather it was hard to pinpoint guys that could play with him for long durations of time. We all thought at this time last year or during the summer, this time last year, that maybe an addition like Mason Marchment was exactly what Tyler Sagan needed to thrive in this Pete DeBoer system. You had Dennis Gurionov playing with him at times, tied to Landria. There seemed to be a revolving door of prospects and AHL guys coming through the lineup at times. Matei Blumel, Riley Tufty, just to name a couple. I mean, it just really seemed like a revolving door all season long with who was playing alongside Tyler Sagan. And whether it was injuries, trades, or guys not playing to the level that they needed to be playing at, Sagan could really just never find those guys that he needed to fit in with. And again, that's I think you can put some of that on him for not producing with those players, but also the players just weren't meshing well at times, or at least not consistently enough for it to be an effective pairing. Mason Marchman, as we know, started the season off red hot, so it seemed like that it was a perfect match but then we saw Mason Marchment hit several slumps throughout the season, and he and Tyler Sagan just weren't always on the same page and not necessarily always the best match. Denis Gurionov, as we know, just had an abysmal season here in Dallas, could never get his game rolling, so he gets traded to Montreal in exchange for Evgeny Dodonov, who doesn't even really play with Tyler Sagan and goes and plays with Jamie Benn and Wyatt Johnston on that third line for the Stars. And so it, it really felt like you had a very solid lineup of the top line, that third line with Ben Johnston and, you know, Dodonoff, and then the fourth line of, you know, kind of a rotating cast of characters there as well. But you seem to always get pretty good production from those guys, Foxa, Glenn Denning, Kiwi Ranta, Delandria getting slotted down there at times as well. But it kind of left Tyler Sagan out to dry where, you know, you have this guy who is not what he once was, but still talented and can still get the job done in a lot of ways, but just doesn't have the adequate accessories if you will on a line with him in order to be an effective and dangerous scoring line like you would want a line featuring Tyler Sagan to be and so I think that you know you look to the future and even as early as this coming season and that's really where you want to see some improvements that get made uh, and it, I also you know don't think that it mixed well with the fact that we talked about Sagan is having to kind of reevaluate some things and restructure and reshape the way that he plays this game. Because again, he's not as fast as he used to be. He doesn't move up and down the ice in a blur like he used to when he was a, you know, the second overall pick back in 2010. He's just not going to burn you like he used to be able to. So now he's getting a lot of his goals down low, down around the crease. He can still let one rip from the slot or from the dot every now and then. He still has that dangerous one timer if his teammates are able to get him set up. But a lot of times now he finds himself covered and he's not able to burn the defense like he used to be able to uh, just even a few seasons ago. So I think you throw in, you know, inconsistent play from line mates and always having a revolving door of guys playing on a line with you. You never have time to establish that chemistry mixed with the fact that, you know, Sagan is having to change some things in the way that he approaches the game and the ways that he plays the game. And it's just a mixture for disaster. It doesn't go well together, and it leaves him out to dry. It leaves his teammates out to dry, and it leaves the coaching staff in an odd predicament where you have things going really, really well on all of the other lines, so you don't want to disrupt that chemistry either for the sake of one player who you kind of expect to, to carry their own weight. It feels like a lot of times with a line like that, you have one guy who needs to be the catalyst for things, and it felt like Tyler Sagan just wasn't that more often than not. And so, again, the expectation is hopefully for he and the coaching staff to find the right pieces to fit around him. And hopefully, you know, you find that pretty early on in the process of getting the team together next season. And then you're able to roll forward from there and get a little bit more of a, a consistent performance from Tyler Sagan uh, and also just find a way for him to be an effective score. I'm not really sure what that looks like for him. And I'm sure that's something he'll be looking to find out and sort through this off season well it's no question that Tyler Sagan is going to be back on the team next season given his contract situation uh, really no doubt that he will be on the roster at this time uh, or not this time next season but by the time training camp rolls around and he will be in a victory green sweater but what are the expectations for him going forward and with all this talk about line mates who should we expect 
to see playing on a line with 91. We'll discuss that coming up next. Tyler Sagan coming back as a member of the Dallas Stars next season. Not really a doubt given the current contract situation. And I know some people are probably not excited for that, but I personally am very excited to see what the next year could hold for number 91 here in Texas. A guy who has become a staple and a household name across the fan base. Again, beloved by thousands and thousands. And a lot of times the people that are most loved also draw the most criticism. So I understand uh, that he is a polarizing player. But I think at the end of the day, if you're listening to this podcast, you're watching the podcast on YouTube, you're a pretty big Tyler Sagan fan, even though sometimes you can be scratching your head or you can grow frustrated uh, at times when you watch him play. But I, I think that, you know, the, the numbers and the fan base speak for themselves that he's a very liked player, very loved player here in Dallas. And it's an exciting next few months for him. I know he talked about it in his exit interview that this offseason is going to be a little bit different. He's getting married. And so things are going to happen and play out for him differently than they have in the past with, you know, now being united with, you know, his current fiance, soon to be wife. But I imagine it's going to be a refreshing and relaxing off season. And, you know, hopefully a few months where he can enjoy some time off and rest and recover and then come back fully rejuvenated and locked in, ready to go when training camp rolls around. I'm not really sure how much of that plays a factor and to what he can do on the ice. But I have to imagine doing things a little bit differently here over the next few months. And of course, getting married is always an exciting thing. Hopefully the relaxation and the refreshment refreshment of some time off will be beneficial for Tyler Sagan, as I'm sure that he has quite a few nicks and scratches after what was a pretty brutal uh, playoff season and playoff stretch for the Dallas Stars, especially Sagan, who was such a key piece early on against the Minnesota Wild. But of course, the biggest key for him this coming season is going to be the need to find two players to fill in alongside of him for this upcoming season. And a lot of people on Twitter, on the poll that I threw up there, a lot of them, and I agree with this, suggested maybe a line of Max Domi and Logan Stankoven. You know, I didn't mention Max Domi in the last segment, but he is another guy who found some time in the lineup with Tyler Sagan, especially near the end of the season and in the postseason a little bit as well. And I know I've sung the praises of Max Domi at nauseum here on this podcast, and I know many of you share the same viewpoint as well, that we will, we would like to see Domi get re-signed and find a, a somewhat permanent home here in Dallas for the next handful of seasons. Domi also has expressed interest in that as well. He hopes that he can you know, finally find a city to settle down in and be a member of a team for more than just a few months before getting traded or before his contract expires and has to move on. So hopefully the front office and Jim Nill take that into account and look to hold on to Max Domi longer uh, than just a, a trade deadline acquisition. So you mix Tyler Sagan and Max Domi, who we've seen have had good chemistry, and then you throw in a guy like Logan Stankoven, who we haven't seen play in the NHL just yet, but the potential certainly is there, and I think it's fair to say the expectations could be you know, a Wyatt Johnston-esque season where you're seeing him potentially throw his name into the hat for a Calder Trophy finalist, although it's, I imagine it's going to be hard for anybody not named Connor Bedard to win the Calder Trophy, but that's a different discussion for a different day and a bridge that we're going to have to cross when we get there. But I think that could be a very interesting line because then you take Tyler Sagan and you put him with guys like Domi, who's not the fastest skater, but can still move a little bit. And then Logan Stankoven, who, I mean, speed is part of his game. I mean, he's a young, fresh player who's going to be able to skate with just about anybody in this league, I think, from the get-go. Uh, he might have to take a little bit of time to get acclimated, but I think that that's very, very interesting because he's quick. He's a very excellent goal scorer, as we've seen during his time at junior hockey and even playing in the World Juniors alongside guys like Connor Bedard. And I think that there's a ton of potential there with Sagan's veteran leadership expertise, Max Domi's vision, his patience, and then what I'm expecting to be just some excellent raw scoring power from Logan Stankov. And that could be a very fun trio to watch. And so I'm curious to see what that process looks like throughout training camp, throughout the preseason. I'm sure we're going to see quite a few different mixtures of lines to see who Tyler Sagan meshes with the best. And hopefully Pete DeBoer and the coaching staff can get that figured out pretty quickly by the start of the regular season. So that way Sagan has that consistency from day one. And we can hopefully see a little bit more production from him more than we saw last season, 50 points 
in 76 games. I'm also curious, you know, you throw that in with how Tyler Sagan's going to continue to evolve his game. Uh, and I, I know that he even knows that he's starting to slow down a little bit. But again, you look at Pavelski, you look at Jamie Benn, and even just around the league in general. And guys always, the, the really great ones find a way to continue to produce and score and help their teams out, even if injuries start to nag them or even if they start to age a little bit. And I think Tyler Sagan has what it takes to find that within himself. It's just a matter of, you know, finding what works best for him and then finding what works best with the guys he's playing with. So certainly not an easy process, but a challenge that I'm sure Tyler Sagan and his teammates and the coaching staff will be up to this fall. But that is going to do it for today's episode, today's player evaluation. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're watching on YouTube, your thoughts on Tyler Sagan's season in 2022-2023 and what your expectations are for him going forward. But thank you for tuning in to the Locked On Stars podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to the show here on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. We are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also find us on social media, Locked on Stars. Just search the podcast name on Instagram or Twitter. And of course, my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. But thank you guys again for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow with another player evaluation. I like to keep it a surprise here, but if you check out Twitter, you'll probably get a pretty good idea of who I'm going to be discussing next. So be on the lookout for that and feel free to give me your thoughts on Twitter, on the poll for the letter grade that you choose and why for the specific player. But I hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. <laughs>